Hi folks, Jason here. Uh, welcome back to, I guess, what would be considered to be part two of the previous video that I did where I was sculpting the uh, character that you can see here. I got around to kind of sculpting the kind of the top half and then basically just did the sort of bottom half as well, putting some sort of trousers on there and put some creases in there and, and then sort of did some shoes. But I took it a step further and I decided to basically take it into 3D coat to retopologize it and to paint it and um, and then eventually back into Blender to rig it and, and pose it. And uh, and so I thought I'd make this video just to go through that, show you the various stages of uh, what I went through. Um, in terms of like um, the painting and stuff, I'll do kind of part of it. I'm not going to do all of it. I'll show you the basically end result and along with the red rig character but apart from that that's um that's going to be pretty much it but uh, without further ado let's get going so following on from the last video uh, you'll continue basically sculpting your character whether it's something similar to this or something different uh, basically uh, in sculpt mode so obviously going from sculpt mode using all the various brushes All the creasing and all of that kind of stuff so just looking at you know uh, checking it over you know put a belt in there one of the things i did forget to do in the uh in the eventual thing is um is i forgot to put some like uh belt straps in there so i put those in in post in um in 3d coat but uh, i can show you that anyway and that's pretty much it so when you're ready to export what you want to do is obviously um, just make sure you, you've got everything uh, done that you needed to kind of get done. And then uh, you go through to file, go through to export, and then obviously export it as, uh, as a Wavefront OBJ. In the next part of the video, we're going to be going then into 3D Coat and then importing this model in there. So here you can see the uh, basically the finished model that um, I'd originally imported and then retopologized and painted in 3D Coat. So this is what I'm going to be doing part of in this video. Like I say, I'm not going to be doing the entire thing. I'll probably have a look at the face and some of the uh, other bits of clothing. But uh, the results are pretty good. You know, you can basically use these um, smart materials here to put, you know, textures on their materials and we've got some shoes as well i was able to basically project from a photograph uh, on the on the shoes there and also partly on the face as well but uh, you can just do it all painted if you want it's uh, it's entirely up to you if you are new to 3d coat i do suggest uh, perhaps uh, go and check out uh, robert dempster's videos in 3d coat and uh, there are plenty of others as well online that you can go and look at, you know, if you're sort of new to this. I'm going to sort of just touch on a little bit on the navigation, but essentially, you know, you want to kind of get up to speed with this. But um, essentially what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be bringing the object in as a voxel sculpt. So I'm going to go and click on that there. We'll be presented with another screen. I'm just going to go and select the folder now. And then I'm going to go and find my... Um, character and then what you've got to do is you've got to basically see this little cube here you've just got to click on it with the left mouse button and we're just going to drag it up you can see there now our character now you'll also see in this little box here if i just bring my uh, mouse down you can see there there's all kinds of numbers this is the estimated poly count and I'm going to take it up probably to around about, say, 2 million. Now, depending on your uh, computer, uh, a million would be okay. Uh, you could even try a little bit less, to be honest. We are going to read to apologize it, but I just wanted to make sure I got enough detail in there as possible. It doesn't have to be a strict number, something around about like, so it was there, say. The only thing you need to do next is hit enter. It'll come up with another box in a second. And then just click yes. And then what we're going to do is just click on any of these tools here. So I'll just go to build and then you'll see there. If I just use the, um, the middle mouse button, you can actually bring it down that way. So to navigate, all you need to do is just left mouse button, rotate around and you can use the middle mouse button just to 
rotate around that way and whatever. I'm just going to change the um, uh, the shader on this. At the moment, it's got this type of shader on here, but I just kind of want to see some of the detail. So I'm just going to go and select one of these default ones here, the clay. You can see there now, it just kind of brings in a bit more detail. I also want this because I like kind of what it did with the cavities. And I want to kind of bring that through to the uh, to the final um, paint. So we've got this here. Everything kind of looks okay, or everything looks in order. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to go through now to this little um, uh, sort of sculpt tree here, and you can see that I've called it Tank Top Four. I'm going to use this really cool function called Auto Topo. Um, now, as far as I'm aware, black. Um, 3D Coat's got like the best retopology um, out there. Um, I've not really explored Blender's retopology that much. Um, I know the ZBrush, that's got quite a good uh, um, retopology there. Maya's okay, um, and I've not tried 3ds Max, but, uh, but certainly in terms of ease of use and simplicity, uh, 3D Coat does appear to be the best of the bunch that I can see, but um, I might stand corrected on that. But uh, for the purpose of doing this anyway, I'm going to stick with 3D Coat. So I'm going to right click on that tree there and go to where it says Auto Topo, right? And then you want to go to there, Auto Topo. I'm going to click on that with left button mouse. We'll cover with the box here. You don't need to necessarily worry about that. Just go and click OK. But this next part will be crucial. So I'm going to go and click on that. So what we're going to do here is, you'll see there it says paint with this tool to mark areas of higher polygon density. Press next when done. The parameter below is the density modulator for shaded, shaded areas. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to paint areas of the model black or gray, um, depending on the volume of um, polygons that you want. So what it does is it comes with a calculation. I think I've got this set to run about, eventually it kind of goes to something like 6,000 faces. Um, you could maybe do less. I just did that as just a kind of a catch all. But essentially what it does, it's really smart when you do this. So before we get into it, I'm just going to go to uh, symmetry, click on symmetry and have it symmetrized on the X axis. It's going to move this down a little bit just so we can see. And uh, I'm going to enlarge this brush by just scrolling with the middle mouse. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see there, if you hold down the left button mouse, you see that little sort of triangle in the middle. That's the kind of degree to which you want it to be dark. So at the moment, that's quite light. But if I bring it up, that will be very that'll be black, basically. But I want this head pretty much black because I want to get as much detail in as I can. So I'm just going to go and literally click with the left mouse button. I'm just going to paint this in like so. And then just move it around. Again, left mouse button. Bring that around like that. Any bits that you've perhaps uh, you've accidentally done, it's like, oh, I didn't want to do there. You could just go sort of control, left mouse click, and then just basically take it back like that. Uh, you can change the brush around the size depending on what you're, what you're doing. Now, if you want like uh, areas, say here, to be not so black, let's say there's not a massive amount of detail on your model, then what you can do is you can just right mouse button and just bring that down a little bit. And there you can see it kind of shades it in, but it's not as intense. I might just raise that up a little bit. I want to try and get as much detail in around some of these areas as I can. So it just does this kind of fit. It's a bit like almost like a weight painting that you might do in um, in Maya or 3D Coat or in, uh, sorry, in Blender. So I'm just going to do this uh, little kind of shoulder area here. So I just want to make sure I get as much of this detail as possible. I think it's pretty safe around the body area, around all these creases. It'll, it'll cover those. But anything where you've kind of got tight details, like, say, around this belt, for example, around there, uh, you might want to do sort of under underneath the legs there as well, just in case there's anything... Um, you kind of need to, you know, if you need a bit more detail in there, 
uh, perhaps a, a little bit around that pocket but again it perhaps doesn't need to be as intense so I'll just kind of do something like that and then maybe on the shoes as well I might just make that a bit more intense because I want to get all the details in there as well so it's very clever what it does it's basically it reads these black areas and, and says okay this is kind of where you want most of the detail okay and then basically that's where it kind of does its um, its calculations and then we'll just do these hands as well very important and then I think we should be pretty much good to go so I'm just gonna paint those in like so and just do that one and again if you want to just kind of lessen it off a bit you can do something like that and maybe just around this sort of chest area but once you've done that, you're ready to go into the next phase, which is uh, clicking next. So we're going to go and click next. Let's give it a second. And then click next again. Now this is where it starts doing its calculation. Okay, and voila, there we have our retopology. So that's looking pretty cool. Uh, don't worry too much about like areas like this. This is just basically like how it shows it. Everything is covered in here. All the hands are looking really nice. That's all looking okay. So we're pretty much uh, good to go. So we're on to the next stage of this now, which is we're going to start basically cutting up uh, the retopology and basically turn them into kind of UV islands, which you, you're going to see basically in here. If I just go to the left here now and go over to where it says UV, you can see here now we've got a few things going on. So I'm going to just do a demonstration of these for you. So I'm going to make sure that, uh, yeah, so we've still got symmetry turned on. Just making sure that's still turned on. That's okay. And basically what they do is this so for mark seams so mark seams would be something like if you were wanting to kind of basically do this kind of a bit more manually you could basically just click on each uh, each of these edges like so by the way if you want to kind of zoom in on things like on maya you can just hit f on the key keypad and it will allow you to then to kind of smoothly kind of go through your model and rotate around it now look what happens when i finally click this it'll change color right so it's very similar to uh maya's 3d cut and sew which i think maya kind of took uh took the idea from uh, 3d coat but uh, but hey that's just the way it is i guess but uh, but i do find this a lot easier um if anyone knows of any other programs um that uh, are easy to uh, uv and wrap in i'll be happy to hear about that in the comments but um but this i found to be a lot easier than than the rest that's essentially um the um the mark seams if we go through to edge loops let me just go and uh, undo this by the way as well let's just take it back okay edge loops is a lot more instantaneous so with edge loops, you click on that. And you can see there now it'll just basically drop in. It'll make a calculation. It'll drop it in where it thinks you want it. Now, because our UVs, well, the, the polygons and the, the faces in particular are kind of um, in a sort of variety of ways, it, we, we don't have like perfect loops going around the arm. So we'll probably have to kind of do a bit of maneuvering with this. So let's say I go and click that there. And then I basically go and click, say, underneath the arm. And then, say, maybe go and click there. You can see there it's a lot quicker. And then for stuff like this, where it's kind of, is, you know, we've got like a, a seam that we, where we don't want it, hold down Control and click and it gets rid of it. So um, works for, like, you know, bigger kind of areas. When you get into, say, like the fingers, which we'll be getting into shortly, um, it gets a bit trickier when you're doing that. Um, but either way, you know, you can sort of work around, you know, work around with it and work with it. The UV path is quite cool. Let me just go and uh, control Z this uh, back out again. So UV path is basically, 
it'll you see that little sphere there it'll allow you to kind of like create um you know sort of create pathways say for example over a, a sort of a, a longer area so for example they all pretty much do the same job but you can kind of go and say pick areas like that and it'll actually draw it for you it's still pretty cool and it just gives you a bit more control so it's kind of almost like a blend of the edge loops and the mark seams where you can actually cover a lot more ground um, this way doing it you know doing it this way so we've got that there let's have a look at putting one there say put one there say and then once you've kind of done that once you've kind of completed it i'm just going to hit that one again there you can hit enter and it will actually uh, put it in there so you can just basically cover larger areas like so and then you can maybe use the edge loop uh, uh, sorry mark seams to kind of just you know join it up so it's entirely up to you which way you kind of go with this so i'm going to be using really primarily the um the uh, probably the mark seams and the edge loops uh to cut this up so let's just control the z this out so let's start with the head so i'm going to use the edge loops for that and i'm going to go and just bring it to where i think it's best place would be probably somewhere like that you can see there it changes color which is pretty cool now you can see there though it's kind of like it's kind of circular kind of shape here now it may mean that like when it comes to like unwrapping it it might be a bit too squeezed so we'll probably have to like put like um a uh, a little seam in there so i'll probably use the mark seams and just kind of click uh, all the way down there just so we've got like a bit of a sort of split going on so it's kind of unwrapped it a little bit more maybe take it all the way up to say say around about that so that's a kind of nicer shape Let's have a look at these arms. So um, again, we could probably have a look at the uh, um, edge loops. Now we've got the tank top, which kind of sort of ends, say, I don't know, probably around about there, say. So what we can do is we can just go and click on that there and then maybe go and just click underneath the arm there like so. And then we can get rid of these other lines here. So I'll go control, click those out, click that one out. And you can see there now you, it might be a bit disconcerting because the colors kind of change around depending on on how many you're creating so it creates even like sometimes different shades you might have a different shade of green or a different shade of blue uh, but it is creating different colors so we've got uh, we've got that sorted there and at the moment that's kind of looking okay although we still need to kind of like create some splits so maybe at the uh, just above the belt we'll maybe click on there you can see it changes color again so that's starting to kind of look okay or maybe like put a split now uh, on the back let's go and have a look at that that's looking okay maybe even down the side so maybe something like uh, sorry i'm gonna do it on the i'm doing it on the wrong side let's just go back again i'm gonna go uh, say there and then one there and you can see there now it's kind of unwrapped it um which is <clears throat> uh, a lot a lot neater right so we've got that sorted there let's go and have a look at the sleeves now uh, let's say maybe take it up to the hand there and we can see the hands change color and then maybe on the hand now i can try and play this out with the um with the um edge loops it may not be entirely precise so maybe it might be an idea to perhaps just go around it with we can I use mark seams or we can maybe even have a look at maybe using uv path let's try that uh, so i can click on that there say and click on that there and let's hit f just so we can center in on that a little bit more and maybe go there maybe create one there um let's maybe go to there maybe and let's try and just stick with the top of the hand um so let's see if that works take that to there 
and then maybe go to there. Put one there, maybe. Now this could be quite useful doing it this way because if you were to say export this into say Photoshop and you wanted to kind of draw into it as opposed to painting into it, it makes things a lot simpler because you know what the top of the hand is and you know what the bottom of the hand is. But uh, we're going to be painting it anyway in in, um, in 3D coat. So, but it's just for future reference. All right. So let's have a look at maybe bring that across there, maybe to there, and let's have a look. Might take it to there, take it to there. And then let's take it to that edge there. I think that's looking all right. And then once you've uh, done it, hit enter. And that hopefully is now has created a uh, uh, an edge. So if I go back to, say, mark seams and hover over now, you can see there it's kind of split it in two. Now, it, perhaps you don't want to split it in two. Perhaps what you want is... If this is the front of the character, maybe this part's going to be seen more than like the edge part. So what we could do maybe instead of having it uh, split near the thumb, uh, we could maybe just go and take these out. So shift, <clears throat> sorry, control and click on it and we'll make the split. Can you see that there now on the right hand side? It's kind of split the thumb now. So we've kind of got basically the hands kind of been split up and it's all one piece so it just means that you know the less scenes you've got the better so we've got that sorted there so that's all looking good and then uh, let's go and have a look at the feet so uh, i could see there for some reason i've accidentally put some uh, loops in there so we can get rid of those it's not a problem and let me just go and hit f and just zoom that in a little bit right so we'll maybe take the We'll tell you what, let's go and have a look at the edge loops and see if that works. Um, let's take, let's say go to around about, maybe we'll take it from there to there. Let's have a look. Maybe something like that. And then what we can do is we can take some of this out. So. Keeping on edge loops, I'll hold down control and I'll just cancel those other lines out. Any lines that we don't want, like there, for example. There we go. So we've kind of got our shoes. We could even, just looking at this, I might be I'm kind of tempted to maybe just bring that trouser leg down a little bit more. take that one out so it's a bit lower down and let's now make that complete so I'm just pressing down control and just kind of cancel these parts so I'm going to take out this line as well I am actually going to put a split in there but I want to decide where that goes I don't want to leave those lines in so We've got that trouser leg done. So if I like hover over there now, you can see it's kind of looking all right. But if you look at the bottom right hand corner, it's, we've got a bit of an overlap going on there. And that's because we need to just have a play around with putting another split in there, say control and then cancel these lines out. So that's looking better. Yeah. So it's kind of unwrapped these trousers and we're, we're seeing something a bit more, a bit more like. Um, yeah, I think I'll go with that for now, I think. And then if we just have a look at the shoes now, we don't want a seam on the top, so I'm going to put a seam on the bottom. So something like, doesn't really matter where, say you're around about there. And maybe bring it up to, say, there. And... I'll probably then take out the seam on the top, right? So I'll go say through to the mark seams, control, and then just control this out. Yeah, because we don't want it in two separate halves. And you can see there on the right hand side now, it's kind of unraveling. 
and flattening it out, which is exactly what we need to see. So there we are. So now we've got our shoe flattened out. Cool. All right. I think we're almost pretty much there, really. With uh, we've done the head, we've done the the um, the tank top, we've done the shirt, we've done the hands, we've done the trousers, and we've done um, the shoes. Let's have a look now at unwrapping this and just seeing what it looks like in the uh, zero to one space or the UV preview. So I'm going to go into the left here and go to where it says unwrap, and we'll go and click on that now and see what it brings up. Cool. All right. So I can see like there's, there's some kind of issues going on there, which you're going to need to take care of. So if I uh, go into say this one here, I can see we've got some issues going on there. There's, we've got like a kind of something's kind of strange going on there. I'm not entirely sure what. I'm going to have to kind of have a look at that. I'm just going to press Control and click off that. So looking at that as it stands. I have come across this issue before when I've had it in symmetry. So what I'm going to do, as soon as I've got like the majority of it done, it's going to click off the symmetry now. So no symmetry. And let's just have a look. Ah, right. I can see what's going on here. So it's kind of created the split that we don't want. Uh, so I'm going to need to kind of just do a bit of a tidy up there and just do the underside. Not a problem. So it's going to go to say edge loops again and maybe let's have a look on the other side. So where's that going to? So that's going to say around about there. Okay, so more or less around about there. So if I come through to there and then do that as well, let's have a look at the back. So again, this kind of like, where's that going to? So that's kind of coming around. Um, So it's kind of coming around to there. So it's probably need that a little bit closer, I think, to there. And then I'm just going to go and take some of these out. So I'm going to go control, take that one out. I'm going to take that one out and that out as well. And then I can uh, maybe go and take that out and just take these lines out as well. Right, so let's go and have a look now. And that seems in the wrong place, so we need a seam going down. Mm -mm -mm. Down to there, and we'll put one in there as well. I'm going to take that out. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but um, it's pretty much you know, it's following the same kind of process uh, that I've been uh, talking about over the course of the um, this part of the video, anyway. So, okay, that's kind of kind of there i think it might actually stand to kind of go a little bit nearer the armpit so i'm just going to click on those bits there cool and then we've got that seam haven't we so the seam where it kind of comes down let's just have a quick look and see where that goes so it kind of comes around that way doesn't it down and around that way around that arc so something like is that about right Something like that anyway. Okay, so that, yeah, so that's looking a lot better. Let's go back now to unwrap. There we go. So we're getting closer. I'm just looking at some of these other parts now, like on the trousers. I uh, just need to kind of tidy these up. So I'm just holding out control and uh, I'm just tidying, getting rid of some of these uh, rogue edges. Um, we don't really want to seam on the... Let's go for the inside there. So we've got the inside edge loop going on there. And then we'll take that from, let's just go and get rid of that now, like so. Get rid of that. Maybe we'll have one going up the back like that. How's that looking? Something like that. So we've got an edge in there. And then we've got an edge in there. 
Okay, so I think that's got it. I might just see if we can get away without having a seam on the front. Let's just go and unwrap that again. So basically, you'd probably go through like a series of just unwraps just to see what's working, what's not working. Right, so almost there, folks, almost there. Let's just go and have a look now at what's going on with these shoes. Oh, let's go and click on those, click on that one there. And for some reason I've lost my seam. I've got one there, but I haven't got one on there. So like I said before, I've, I've had some issues using the symmetry function in um, in 3D Cope before, where I've been doing these unwraps, but uh, it's not a problem. But it is relatively easy, you know, to do once you kind of get into it. Um, you can get models done quite quickly. It's very good for kind of characters, um, static mesh. When it comes to doing things like um, having animated characters, of course, you're going to need to kind of take a bit more care with your retopology and you know, if you've got like features like eyes and stuff like that moving. All right, and let's have a look at. Oh, thanks for that. And um, now this isn't entirely. Just dismiss that for a second. Running out of space. Um, let's have a look at. Where is that going? So it's going around about there. Is that right? No, we'll just get rid of. those lines and just get rid of that as well that and check in on that let's just do another unwrap on that then okay so we're getting closer uh we've still got a bit of weirdness going on with these areas so go and click on that so it's with the sleeves right so let's press control and click on that so what's the issue there have i not got a split in there anymore it looks like for some reason i don't have a split in there anymore it doesn't matter just go and put one in there like so. You can offset these as well. I know I've got like kind of got that the split that's kind of there. If you want to break it up a bit, look, you know, you can do that. So it can kind of go put a split there perhaps instead. So we've got that sorted there. And then do the same on the other side as well. So I'll put the split say there. Just so it's a little bit offset. Okay. And then we'll just go and uh, unwrap that. Excellent. So that's looking a lot better. You can see there now we've got the hands, we've got the shoes. So we've got the kind of the hands there, the shoes, and we've got this other hand here, although this doesn't look like it's um, it's properly done. So let's just go back now and uh, I'll just go control and click off that. Let's have a look. So we've got partial split, but it's not the full Monty. So let's go F and just continue doing our clicking. So again, you could use the UV path tool. That could be quite handy. So we'll go from there, say, and we'll go, okay, we'll go there and maybe, oh, for some reason it's taken it all the way over there, which I didn't want to have happen. So let's just take that back out again. Let's go back in again and all right doesn't seem to want to have that so let's just go with the um, seams instead all right and we'll just
Okay, so that seems to have sort of split that, but we don't want it to totally split. So we, again, we want to really move the seams away from the uh, from the front of the hand. So let's do like we did on the other side. And we'll just take these out actually. And then we'll just have the hands join. So you can see there on the right hand side now, it's starting to kind of join up. And it's kind of joining on that finger now. So it's basically split. You can imagine it kind of splitting that hand and then laying it out. And that's essentially what we've got there. I might just actually though, just take that. just to the thumb. Now it's kind of that seam is kind of hidden. So that way we can kind of get maybe to there. What about something like that? Let's have a look and see what that looks like anyway. We'll just go and run again. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. Uh, there's some potential issues there I can see. And again, you can sort of just carry on with that but uh, I can see here there's some kind of weird crossover so I might what we're looking at there then we've got are we got a missing seam or is that looking all right I might just drop drop some seams in there just underneath but we've got some kind of crossing over going on there so let me just have a quick look at that um, I just take that out there I think that was joining up with the bottom there there we go I think I think I've identified the problem I think Let's have a look at that and see what that does. Still there. Uh, let's have a look. I might just continue and put like a split at the front. See if that makes a difference. All right, so we've kind of got them as separate. I did really want to avoid putting a split there, but for some reason I was getting an issue where it was kind of crossing over. Um, so not to worry. I think it'll be fine anyway. But uh, but yeah, you generally want to try and avoid splits. I guess technically, because there's like a zipper going there, you could technically get away with it, you know, but uh, that's a sort of a lucky you know, a lucky um, thing that, you know, that might be the case because you might have something, a character that doesn't have that. But uh, but anyway, so we're going to go with that. So the next video we're going to be, or next part of the video, we're going to be looking at baking this now and putting it into the paint shop. Okay, so we're ready to bake this out now and put it into the paint shop. So once you've got all your your um, your UV your seams done and all that, and you put it all, you're going to unwrap and then put it all into this little island here, ready to go to the next stage, which is baking. It's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is go to where it says bake, and then bake with normal map per pixel. Click on that. You don't need to do anything here. Just leave everything as is. Leave the settings as they are. Just click OK. And then you can determine which software you want to take it back into. So depending on whether you're working in 3ds Max or Blender, Maya, Substance Paint, uh, Designer and Painter, Unity, Unreal Engine, ZBrush, uh, you can set the default. So I've set this back to Blender because we're going to be going back into Blender. Um, I've set it to about 2048 by 2048. That's like a standard thing anyway. Um, you don't really want to be going into like 4K at this stage you know when you're doing a video like this and so now if you go in like more high end then yeah you might want to go into 4k but we'll keep that as a uh, 2k gonna click ok and then let it do its magic okay the moment of truth i'm going to go back before i go into the paint shop it's going to go to sculpt and it's going to go and 
turn this off now because you'll end up with double uh, models otherwise. So I'm going to turn off the uh, the model that we've just um, retopologized, and then we'll go through to paint and voila, there we are. We have our character. If I just go and hit W now, you can see that it's all nicely topologized. And even though those fingers were looking like particularly ugly um, before, if I just go and hit W again, when it comes through to the bake, that actually looks quite round when you look at it. That's pretty cool. Not bad, huh? So, where do we go from here? So, again, you could you'd probably do well just to look at some uh, videos online of uh, going into like painting in uh, 3D coat. Um, suffice to say, I'll just take you through a, just a, a short little um, intro just to the interface. Obviously we've got um, on here, we've got things like paintbrush. Now these are some of the things that I've just used in the, you know, generally is the paintbrush. Uh, there's this little tool here, the transform uh, copy tool where you can basically put images on there, paste it, you know, paste images onto your model. Uh, we've got like an eraser tool, there's a paint bucket tool, things like that. But there's a lot of this stuff I don't really use. Paint, paintbrush and the uh, transform copy tool and uh, perhaps the eraser tool. That's about it. On the right here, you've got all the different types of brushes. So just like Photoshop, you've got these different types of alpha brushes which give different types of effects. So for example, if I just go into the uh, layers here, I'm just going to go and create another layer. Let's just go and put this one, say, just above... The initial layer. So this is like basically like the the baked layer. You can see that there. If I just take turn that off, you can see there now that doesn't have any details. So this is the the baked shader we have from the previous model, which I want to keep. I quite like this, so I'm going to keep it in there. But I'm just going to go create another layer. You can name these layers as well, so you can sort of call it uh, test or whatever. And uh, let's go and pick a shader. So you've got all these different types of shaders. If you scroll with your mouse, you'll be able to get like uh, all these different types of shaders on there. So you've got all kinds of things like metal. You can like double click on that. It'll give you this little smart uh, material preview. You can click on that. It'll actually give you like a readout of what it's going to look like. You can play around with these things as well. So you can like rotate it. Now there's not much texture to kind of rotate. You know, you're not going to see a lot of difference, but you can do things like zoom in so you can maybe make it more textured or less textured and things like that. It's probably not the best example to, to, to show you with, but, um, but basically it's pretty much select a, a smart material and then just start painting with it. Um, You've got other other things here, like um, there's a kind of like plastic kind of color there. Now, some of these, depending on the kind of complexity of them, they can take a while to load. So uh, you click OK, click OK. But the same thing with that as well. And then you start painting. Uh, you've got, you can change the intensity of it. So you can like uh, right button mouse and just kind of raise that up. If you look at the top here as well, you can, you can, increase things like the depth of it and um, the uh, the colors and also the glossiness as well um, but again I'm not going to get too much into that um, uh, now but uh, but that's essentially that's what they do um, what we're going to use for this though is we're going to um, just have a quick look at if you go into here as well you can see you've got other types of um, materials as well if we're going to uh, the cartoon for example you've got all these like cartoon wood effects and uh, dirt as well that works well when you've kind of done tech you know put materials on there already uh, we've got fabric which we're going to be um, um, playing around with there for example and um, uh, plastic as well you've got all these different types of finishes now you can also create your own materials so for example for the skin material if i just go back to the default and scroll all the way down you've got a little plus symbol if i click on that now it brings up another little box let's call this skin just hit enter and then you'll see here you've got like a, a section for color, section for the depth, and it'll actually create the normals for you. It'll create the roughness for you, the metal, and all that kind of stuff. And you can, I think, add more. You can add layers, but we're just going to stick with pretty much just with uh, perhaps just with these three for now. So all you need to do is uh, you'll need an image. So go and get like say a, a skin texture. Click on there, and then you go and find where your uh, image is. Now I uh, 
downloaded one yesterday so we can see here I think we've got a skin texture but I did have one of an old old skin I'm not sure was that it there I think that might have been it yeah there we go so we've got some old skin there I'm going to click open and I'm going to use that again for the um, the bump for the uh, normals so I'm going to go and find that again and pop that in there like so and then same thing oh you can see there it's already given as a preview and then the roughness as well I'll use the same thing again now obviously I'll need to sort of dial this down a little bit you can see there now it's quite severe uh, so you can play around with things like the depth you can see there now it's kind of you know you can play around with these things afterwards as well so don't worry if you don't get, quite get it right before but let's say for example you wanted something like just a little bit of a bump on the skin and you can play around with roughness as well so make you know making it kind of like shiny or or whatnot and uh, metalness you know again you can kind of just play around with it that way um, but pretty much when you're done I'm going to click save so now our sort of skin texture is ready to go and it's kind of got that nice kind of like you know skin kind of like uh, greasy kind of skin texture so now if I just go obviously I'll need to go and turn on symmetry so I'll go symmetry on the x-axis enable symmetry so it'll come up with a little line there and then basically you can start painting so once you've kind of got that in there go to your little brush and then basically you can start and let's just call this um we'll call this skin we'll rename it we'll call it skin and now you can basically just start painting with it again depending on like the intensity that you want but um, but essentially you can just start painting with photographs which is pretty cool and you get some pretty instant results now if this is looking a little bit too glossy for you you can for example um, take this and let's say I decided to kind of just paint over here and do all that like so and just do that there say around the neck and then you might want to do the hands as well you know so whilst you're at it uh, so let's go and do the hands and of course the beauty of this is all you have to do is like one hand and the other hand will be done because we've got symmetry turned on and I've got that sorted out there now personally I want to kind of keep so a couple of things going on I want to kind of keep that nice like um, cavity kind of effect um, from the bake so what you can do is you can just sort of take the opacity down a little bit like so and actually start to kind of bring some of that through so depending on like the severity of it uh, you might want to go with something like that for example yeah, so we've got a bit of texture kind of going on now and you can see that kind of cavity kind of going back now as i was saying earlier if you want the glossiness to kind of be dialed down a little bit you'll see here where it says roughness you can actually dial it down can you see that if i just move click and move that down or maybe even move it down to zero let's just click zero that's pretty much taking it down now there's some other stuff going on there i think we've got a bit of metalness and you can play around with some of the features in here so uh, the metalness there we can maybe take that down to say 50 see what that does you see there it just makes a little bit of a change if you want to take it completely out we'll just take it down to zero so that's looking pretty matte now it just depends on what you're going for might just want to put a little bit of sheen on there so I might just take the metalness back up again let's take it to maybe like say 40 so it's got a bit more of a kind of realistic um, edge about it and then basically you apply the same principles with with all of it you don't necessarily need to use images you could just go from the top here and use like the default uh, paint click on that and then just literally like you would do in Photoshop just choose a color kind of go, okay I want a kind of brownish kind of color for the hair something like that yeah it'll give you a little read out there or maybe a little bit darker and then create another separate layer perhaps or use the same layer it's entirely up to you but like let's just call that hair and then you can uh, basically start kind of painting so I can move that down and go okay I just might just hit F on that a little bit so I've got a bit more control and then uh, you know just start painting into it now that is quite severe uh, so maybe what I'd do is and I, bear in mind I'm doing this with a mouse you can use a um, your Wacom uh, tablet as well I'd probably would say combination of both because the control isn't entirely there when it comes to to painting so you probably flip back and forth between 
the Wacom and the um, and your uh, mouse. Well, that said, that last character uh, that I showed you, uh, the finished character, that was all done with the mouse. So you can pretty much do it all with the mouse, to be honest, um, depending on what you're going for. So we've got something like that there. It's a little bit too dark, so I might want to just take the opacity down on that a little bit and just, you know, just so it's not so severe. Now, if the edges are looking a little bit too uh, sharp, or you can hold down Shift and actually blend these as well. So that's quite a neat, a neat little trick there if you want to kind of get a bit more kind of subtlety kind of going on and of course you just can keep layering it so you could create you know more layers more layers and more layers depending on what you're what you're after and again you can just continue then going with that and just putting the hair in like so we've got this like a receding kind of hairline thing going on there um, if you want to take parts of it out you can do so you can maybe put some of it in and then maybe what you could do is you could use the eraser tool there, maybe even use one of these alpha brushes, maybe like something like that. And uh, maybe just dumping that and then maybe shift and just sort of smooth that out a bit as well. So you got a bit more of a kind of phased kind of a look about it. So same thing with that as well, like something like that. So it looks at, you know, again, it's just got a like a, just an element. I know it's like a kind of cartoonish character, but at least you've got a an element of kind of of uh, realism in there. Other things you can do as well is like if you want to kind of like, you know, uh, bring a bit more sort of color to the face, you can maybe uh, we could maybe bring this up a little bit and maybe make the cheeks and the nose a little bit redder. So maybe we could take uh, let's go back to the brush tool there. Got the soft brush selected, and maybe another layer. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go back to the face. Maybe we'll go back to the skin, and then create another layer. And we'll just call this um, uh, skin two. And then, you know, look at maybe just giving it uh, our character a bit of a. We don't want to give him like a like completely like red nose, but you know, just put a bit of sort of say a bit of color on that there you can maybe take some away as well like so and maybe shift and just kind of dial that back a little bit you can see there as well it, it'll because we've got the normals turned on um it's actually putting a bit of a bump in there as well so you're getting like the illusion of depth kind of going on there with the uh with the pause and things like that now we don't want to go too overboard with this because you'll end up looking like a bit of a clown so we just want to just kind of give a suggestion of I've got some kind of like, you know, rose colored cheeks. If you wanted to, you could uh, dial this down again. So while pasty, you can like just weaken that a little bit, depending on what you're kind of after. And basically you carry on like with the with the rest of the um, rest of it. Now, I just wanted to kind of do a couple of things before I kind of bring uh, start bringing this video to a close, which is um, just looking at this uh, thing to do with the faces and projection. So this is pretty cool and it worked well for the face and also for the shoes. And um, that's by using this tool here, the transform, transform copy tool. So I'll go and select that now. A couple of things you want to do, you want to take down the metalness and also you want to take down the uh, roughness as well. Take that to zero. And we're going to go and import an image now. We're going to project it on this character's face. So this is pretty, uh, this is quite a cool little tool. I'm going to go to import. And then uh, I've got like just a photograph. Um, which one was it again? It was um, like an old man's face. I think I've got somewhere. It wasn't that one. It was knocking around somewhere. I'm sure it was. Uh, let's go and have a look. It wasn't that one. Let's go and have a look in one of my other folders. Was it in that one? Could be that one there. Yeah, there we go. So we've got this character here. And what I did was, obviously he's got his cap on. You know, you could take your time, put it into Photoshop, clean it up a little bit, do a photo bash. I'm just going to use this as is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go open it, open that, so you can see that now the character's face is there. Might just zoom in with the with the character a little bit, bring that up a little bit like that. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to call this face, 
and you can basically do uh, with the left foot and mouse you can rotate so you can basically move it on the outside and do that uh, the um, uh, right button mouse you can sort of zoom in with your character but with this what you can do is you can rotate with that also you can once you've kind of positioned it so let's say let's put this into a position say something like I don't know could be something like that even the eyes are the most important thing the rest of it isn't is well maybe the mouth but the eyes are the most important thing on this so I'm just going to make sure I kind of get the eyes pretty much set up now it will actually mirror it so it doesn't matter if even if that one's off might make these a little bit larger maybe something like that because it's going to mirror it over to the other side anyway and then we've got this mouth section here where there's got his moustache so I might just move that to say around about there and let's just move that down to say something like that um yeah you can basically like rotate it <clears throat> you can scale it by clicking hold of it and dragging it to sort of scale it but i pretty much got it where i need to need to get it and then all you need to do once you've kind of got that set up is hit enter and hey presto we have our image now i'm just going to hit escape to get rid of it and um, just go into say the brush tool and you can see there now it's kind of dropped a photograph in there which is pretty cool and it's given some other little features in there which you could probably play around with right now the caps an issue so maybe what we can do is obviously i put this on another layer you can see there so what we can do is i can take the eraser tool for example and maybe go into the soft brush and maybe take this out like so and something like say that and if you want to you can just sort of uh, hold down shift and just smooth that out a little bit just so you haven't got like this horrible edge to it so something like that you see there it's got a bit of a bump as well and then with the side here again you can do the same thing so maybe just take part of that out but you might not want to take you might not want to sort of take all of it out um you know you could sort of just select parts of it i think this, this mustache is looking pretty cool for example and the mouse looking pretty cool it kind of fits pretty much where where we've um, where we've uh, with our characters got it uh, but there's some other bits here that you can see you might want to take some of this out there like so and perhaps around the back and obviously just checking for any other areas like say around the ears and things like that but you can also clone so it's got this nice kind of like stubble thing going on there but if you wanted to you could also use this clone stamp so just like photoshop <clears throat> you could basically go to this little stamp symbol here let's change well maybe we'll stay with this brush because it's kind of speckled a little bit and that might be what we're kind of after and uh, in order to kind of pick apart what you need to do is so unlike photoshop which is like uh, alt this is control so if i hit hold down control and then pick a point like say there it's now going to mirror everything you can see that happening now it's going to mirror everything that uh, that's that i'm going from so but obviously just like photoshop you've got to be like wary about uh, what you're using and where and making sure that it doesn't kind of go off if any of it's kind of looking particularly kind of hard you can just hold down the um, the uh, shift key and again it'll kind of smooth that out that's looking pretty cool you can sort of smooth off these uh, areas as well uh, maybe go back to uh, where are we you can have a look at the brush maybe just smooth that off smooth these bits off as well and then you can just keep adding to it and adding to it if the eyebrows are looking a bit off you know maybe you could um you know uh, again project onto there you know but um i think that's looking to be honest i think that's kind of looking pretty much where i want it to kind of look i could maybe take that um we've got a bit of a because uh, i'm like using that layer i'm not on the um on the on the hair layer it's adding a bump now to it which is like that's interesting but um i don't want the gloss on there so what i'll probably do is if i want to kind of make some changes say put some more eyebrows or give them a bit more definition i'm going to create another layer i'm going to call this eyebrows and 
And then I could take that then and maybe even use like another alpha brush, maybe even something like that. And let's just scale that up a little bit and take the roughness down. So maybe take that down to say zero, but leave the bump. So we've got the bump still on there. Let's just see what this does. So that's pretty cool. So now we've kind of got like a bit of like a false kind of um, bump to our um, uh, to our character, um, you know, with the eyebrows. So it looks like, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's been sort of modeled that way, but it's a total illusion. And if the eyebrows aren't kind of working out, you can go back to the um, eraser tool, maybe use something like that. Or maybe even what about that? Let's try that. Now, as far as I remember, there we go. So if you want to rotate the brush as well, nine and zero as well at the top of the keyboard, you can do that. So you can kind of play around like doing things that way as well. So if I were to take, say, that there, and you can just basically start kind of erasing parts of it and just phasing it in basically like so, like like for example, yeah, just so it's not so harsh. And basically what you're starting to see now is really the buildup of uh, painting, uh, a bit more designing, some additional kind of effects that you can do on there in a relatively short space of time with, um, you know, with a lot of tools at your tools at your, uh, you know, at your disposal. And um, you can end up with some really, really, uh, cool effects. Now, obviously, things like uh, the um, you could carry on with this head, but if I go to say, if I was going to go into the next part, which would be like say, you know, the the shirt and the dicky bow stuff, whatever, then three um, D coat does have some inbuilt um, uh, materials anyway, which you can use. So, for example, if I go through to say fabric, uh, some stuff I think I've loaded in there already, but like things like say we've got this kind of like hessian type fabric there i've got another fabric here white cotton this is one that i loaded in just the same principle i got a picture of some white cotton texture and i just put it in here so i could create another layer rename this and call it a uh, shirt and then uh, and then just start painting into it maybe just use with a soft brush for this and um, if i just click on that there Go and use the um, uh, the brush tool, which then enlarges this up a little bit. Let's just go and use that uh, there, and hopefully we can we start, should start to sort of see something. So there we go. Now, if you want a little bit more detail than that, so at the moment it's like it's not entirely there. This is where the preview comes in because what you can do is you can move that over, and let's say you want to increase the fibers, you use these tools up here. So you can go like the uh, the eye, you know, the uh, the glass there. You can eyeglass and you can increase the size of it. Check that out. So you get a bit more texture there. So if I just go and click on that pin now and then start drawing into it, you got this lovely kind of like uh, texture thing going on there. Where you've got some fabric. Pretty cool, huh? And as I was saying before, you know, I want to try and keep these kind of um, uh, the sort of the um, the cavity kind of effect on there just overall. So what you can do here is, you know, obviously as you're working through this and obviously I work on the shirt and of course I'm doing this like messily. I mean, you know, what you can do is you can put it all in initially quite rough and then you can take the eraser tool and then just use the eraser tool just to sort of basically take away what you've put in there, you know. You got it all on layers, so there's a lot to kind of play around with. You know, you, you don't have to be um, super neat uh, initially. You know, you can just kind of paint it in there and then work around it, work into it, things like that. So again, so just kind of tidying up those edges there. And again, all with the mouse, you know, so it's um, it's quite forgiving, really, you know, in terms of like what you can sort of create you know, with this. Any areas where you've kind of got a bit of a sharp line, again, shift tool and just sort of smooth that out. But for like pretty quick results, that's not that's not bad. And then you kind of got this uh, 
area here with the uh, with the shirt and again you can kind of smooth these bits out if you want to but as I mentioned before I'd like to kind of for that um, you know that cavity kind of effect to kind of um, to um, to come through so here with the shirt you know you can just take down the opacity and then you start to kind of get that nice kind of shading kind of oh probably gone a little bit too aggressively with that let's just take it up a little bit maybe something like that maybe around about 50 percent say yeah or more you can maybe take it up to say 60 just click on it and maybe say 60 or 70 let's try that that's not too bad so again though it just kind of keeps a little bit of that kind of quality in there and say for the little dicky bow we could use this uh, this is what i use for the other model so i could double click on that and again use the um the preview just to kind of see what you know to how big the pattern is now that's looking all right but you can maybe just reduce it or decrease it depending on what you want to kind of go for and uh, maybe something like that yeah and then once you've kind of got what you needed i'm going to zoom in a little bit and then oh maybe just create another layer i'll call this dicky bow and then uh, just paint into it like so and voila you have a dicky bow and then you could apply the same principles as well so maybe just take the opacity down a little bit like so and again you can tidy up as well with the array so a lot of this is just rinse repeat you know you you put in your materials on there painting into it and then you know tidy up the rest but that's pretty good and then uh, lastly I'm just gonna have a look at this um little um uh, tank top and again i think i'll probably choose something like um let's we'll stay with the fabrics and maybe have a look at I've got something like what's that there um i'm not entirely sure i might have a look at this gene material instead let's have a look at that i'm just going to save this out before we go any further as well so it's going to go to file always a good idea folks save as and we'll just call this um tank top demo tank top demo there we go and what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to go and have a look at say double click on that and go back to our brush so look at a preview okay that's looking all right so it's almost like a sort of gene material but again you can play around with some of the the degree of the um the material you know how how much do you want it to kind of show or how little so something like that maybe might be quite nice and then we can zoom in a little bit and then just start painting into it there are other tools you can use as well if you want to be like a little bit more like um, accurate and i shall come to those in a second so i'm just going to go and paint into that just paint into that bit there yeah if you wanted to say just kind of do an area you can come up to the right here and you've got all these different types of tools you can actually use this like it's a bit like the polygonal tool in um in photoshop if i click on that now i could probably that's where you've got to be careful it's going to go escape usually for this i'm going to use the alt key to move around and i'm going to go click and say click use the alt key to move around to say there bring that all the way down there and then basically bring this all the way along like so like that can be a little bit confusing and then bring this all the way up to say there may need to do some touch-ups but um but anyway and then bring that all the way around hopefully this is going to work all the way around to i think that was our starting point wasn't it there and hopefully there we go so it's kind of kind of worked <laughs> it's kind of worked um kind of not worked and uh, maybe like uh do like a, a smaller area so maybe what we'll do is we'll do something like yeah that was a bit of a face plant let's just try say a section of that say something like that yeah bring that round to say there then double click 
bosh. Oh, I think I know why. Because if I go back to there, it's saying ignore back faces. I think that might have something to do with it. Just click off that and let's just try that again. So I'm just going to go Control Z then out. I think that's it, or it might be the depth limit. Let's just have a quick look. I shall know in a second. Let's have a quick look at that. There we go. It's because I had that. So make sure that you've got ignore back faces ticked off. That's why it happened. But the beauty of this is it will project it. So even if you're doing it, even if you do do it in sections. So let's say I do this to there and whatever, and say take that all the way along the bottom, and then take it up to the top. Say so you do it. You decide to kind of do it in a kind of in a patchy form. You can still then go back to the brush, go back to like a regular brush, and then just paint into it. You're not going to see any seams as as such. So it's just a, just another way to kind of like um, cover big you know big spaces, but also if you want like a if you don't want to kind of do it the messy way, you can work with it that way and just kind of get a big section of it done in a shorter space of time. But anyway, so we've got that done there, like so. And then, of course, you can use the eraser. Let's try that again. And then maybe go back to the paintbrush tool and maybe just paint over this like so. And you get the get the general idea, right? So you know you can sort of smooth some of this out and paint into it. Um these edges can maybe choose a different one, like a lighter one there, maybe, and then just paint into it like so. Just to add a bit of variation, really. So we've got like a different sort of finer texture. And then just move that round like so and whatnot. Something like that. So already you can see in a relatively short space of time, you know, um, you've got you've got a character that you kind of like that's you know pretty much sort of together. And then the same applies for the uh, trousers. Same thing with the shoes, although you could use like a projection again. So like I did with the face, you could project on. I think I might just do a little quick demo here for you for the feet. If you want to kind of get more of an orthographic view, you can go to the top here. Now I'm using an older version uh, of 3D Coat. So I think on the newer versions, you've got like a little head in here where you can kind of like go into different views. You can go into the, say, top view, which is the more orthographic view. Although that's probably a little bit too much on the top because I want to be able to see the feet. Uh, might just click F, and just zoom in a little bit there. There we go. So if you wanted to kind of project, uh, say, uh, some shoes on there, again, you could use that same principle with the transform copy tool. Go to import. Now I think I've got an image somewhere. I think of some shoes. If it's not here, it might be in another folder. Um, and you can just basically project them, uh, project them on there. Uh, so quick look. Is it? Oh, there we go. So take that, uh, you can just rotate that around like so, position them. Again, I'm going to do this really, really quick, but it's just as a little demo. Say something like that, put that over over there, say, get it somewhere like in line. Uh, it wants to be a, just approximately, you know, the same kind of, uh, same, um, same size. And then, um, or maybe just put this on another layer call the shoes and then uh, oh got caps lock on and then um, hit enter and then escape and then hey presto uh, if I just go back to the brush now uh, we've got some shoes and of course you can continue working into that and obviously I've done this you know very very quickly but basically what you could do uh, from there is, you know, you can continue working into it. You can also use these other brushes. So you can see there, I just accidentally, accidentally did that, but you can also do things like um, with this um, brush um, so selected, you could maybe even just, again, put some laces in there. It's kind of like faux kind of, 
faux um, uh, 3D. Let me just do that again with a different. Uh, let's tell you what. Let's try some like lighter laces or some grey laces, something like that. Um, maybe also we'll take off the roughness as well. We don't want shiny laces, so I just zero that out. But again, just doing this as a quick demo. like so yeah you get the general idea so it's a pretty cool bit of kit really you know we're all things said and done you know and you can create a character in a relatively short space of time and um you know and uh you know obviously like you've got other programs like substance painter of course uh, which you can kind of work in but i found Personally, I've found, and although I've done, you know, done a lot of work in Substance Painter, um, as a one-stop shop, uh, 3D Coat's pretty good. Yes, it's got its bugs, and um, it's got its kind of issues like any other program, but um, but it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty a pretty cool bit of kit. And of course, where would you go from here? Or well, what you could do is obviously after you kind of finish your character, as I showed uh, showed you at the beginning, you could then sort of import it. So what you'd do is you'd take this character. Let's say I'll just tidy that up a little bit, just tidy up the shoes a little bit. So basically you could take this character and uh, once you've kind of finished with it, go into um, File, Export to Objects and Textures. And here what you do is go and put it in a folder. So I'll go to your desktop. We'll call this um, uh, Demo, right? Or call it whatever you want. I've still got Caps Lock turned on. Let's just do that again demo okay go and open that folder <laughs> it's gone back to it. it doesn't matter and then call it uh we'll just call it um um tank top tank top two okay and uh oh tank top tank top two let's just try that again tank top two tank top two okay i think that's right now yeah time to old demo and then once you've done that uh, once you've got that uh, sorted has it given me a quick lock demo click save there we go and then uh, in terms of exports i'm just going to put it as arnold which is like standard in maya it'll give you a diffuse a specular roughness and a normal and the rest of it you don't need to worry about. Uh, it's just giving you some information here about what type of file it is. It's a TJ, a target file. You don't need to worry about any of this. Just click OK. It'll export those into your um, folder. And then from there, if I now bring back a Blender with our other character. And let's say, I'll tell you what, I'll just bring up, if I go open recent, we'll go... Um, bring up um uh, the one from the previous if i just go um and we've got a character uh from previous session so this is my character from um, that i'm working on at the moment which i did in the, exactly the same way and then what we could do here is we could go uh, file and then go uh, import and all you need to do is just import it as an obj it'll bring the um it'll bring the materials in with it so we'll go there let's go find our demo go import and then go obj and go move that out to there or maybe a little bit further and there you can see uh, we've got the little character that we brought in there now you might want to make some adjustments to it so on the material so for example when you bring it in I'm just going to bring a light in um, in here. So if I just go and like go Control and uh, sorry Shift and A, it's going to bring a point light in. Okay, so you might see that uh, when you bring it in, it's got some nice textures in there. You can see, in fact, I think it's better than my first attempt. It's got some nice little kind of bumps there with the skin, so it gives it just like a little. Bit, it's kind of cartoony, but it kind of gives it a little bit of kind of uh, realism though, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you may need to do some tweaking with the materials. So, for example, if I um, just zoom out a little bit and go through to materials, 
uh, you might want to do things like, say, for example, on the um, metallic, you might want to like bump that up a little bit. It'll just kind of give him a little bit more depth, you can see there, like so. And some of the little bits and bobs, like uh, the roughness as well, you might want to play around with that a little bit. You don't want him too shiny, but, uh, but you know, give it just a little bit of a sheen. But that is pretty much it. Um, the next stage I'm going to be going to this, which I'm doing at the moment, is uh, rigging the character. So, as you can see there, so let me see if we can just bring the rig back. You can see there now I'm um, just currently rigging, rigging another character up and uh, playing around with that, which you will see uh, very, very soon. So that's pretty good. That's using meta rig again. So I've, I've already done a video on that, but I was just going to show the character um, when it's all kind of posed and kind of playing around with it, uh, playing around in that way. So lots of fun to be had there. But that is pretty much it really, folks. Uh, hopefully you found this uh, video uh, useful. It's given you some ideas about what you can do in your own work and um, some of those possibilities that you can um, explore uh, in uh, Blender and also in 3D Coat. But that's it. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found it uh, useful. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to give me a like if you like the video and a comment, of course, and uh, I shall see you in the next video. Okay, that's it, folks. Bye for now.